Title, Fate of Leon, written by Christine T. Pahana. Chapter 4, Exposed. Help me. Please, don't leave me. Walking in rubble, I turn back and no longer see them. They are gone. Beep, 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 beep. The brand new annoying alarm clock that Samantha thoughtfully gave me worked, and had it not, the nightmare I was having would have. But this time, no sweat and no heart palpitation, except the tears. I ran into the bathroom and started the shower before Samantha would peek in to check on me. As quickly as the warm water hit my face, the pain was swept away. I no longer felt the urge to cry. Maya, I got your breakfast ready. Eat it while it's hot. I'll be out in a minute. Her voice reminded me of last conversation we had last night. Great. I just might ask Samantha to help me with my French braid. Hesitant because I'm not used to asking for help, but now I'm desperate. Maybe I'll go downstairs with a messy braid, and she'll be nice enough to offer to fix my hair. Yes, I like that idea better. Of all days, Maya, why? Why what? Acting totally oblivious. Come here. I'm going to fix your hair. She is so predictable. About this catering thing, I know everything is last minute, but stick to my side and do everything I do. I have served them before. Why do I have a feeling that there is something she's leaving out? As we arrived to the restaurant, Mr. Boyd looked annoyed and pleased at the same time. That's two days in a row, Maya, showing up early with a perfect braid, but yet... I don't know if that is enough to make up for yesterday's debacle. I felt the need to apologize. I'm sorry, mister. Don't apologize. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt that maybe somewhere in your clueless mind you had other problems to worry about. But tonight, I will give you a chance to redeem yourself. I will have Samantha prepare you for this evening's event. I just realized he probably has no idea that Samantha is living with me nor that we have been talking. I think it's a good idea not to mention anything until she says so. I noticed something different about the restaurant. In the area where we do banquets, it was covered by this beautiful velvet curtain, isolating itself from the rest of the restaurant. I peeked inside out of curiosity. It looked like there was a lot of time spent on this. The decor was nothing like the rustic Italian theme of the restaurant. The private room was eclectic of Moroccan and Asian flair to it. There hung on the twelve-foot ceiling were twelve rows of drapes with intricate design colored in brown, burgundy, purple, and mustard, along with a magnificent three-tiered chandelier centered perfectly that glistened throughout the whole room, accented with red tassels on each tier of the chandelier. The shiny rosewood mahogany dining table was huge, and it looked like it weighed a ton. It, too, was set perfectly center beneath the chandelier. The setting on the table was elegant with china dinerware and gold-plated utensils. The delicate-looking glassware was spotless. With all that hard work, I was surprised there was no centerpiece. Beneath the table was a huge, thick Persian rug that almost overtook the whole room. I only noticed four chairs. The frames of it are gold-plated, and the cream upholstery fabric was lined with red Chinese letterings. I thought it was odd for something so over the top. But then again, I don't think like a billionaire. There you are. I was wondering where you were, Samantha said, looking breathless. Is this where we're going to be this evening? Yes, it is looking unenthused. Is everything okay, Samantha? You don't seem yourself. I just... I have a lot in my mind. Plus, Danny is getting on my last nerve. By the way, I need you to try out your wardrobe for tonight. We're not wearing our uniforms? Come, we got a few minutes. It's in Danny's office. I have never been in Mr. Boyd's office before. In fact, I never knew he had one. It was surprisingly nice. If his furniture was not extravagant, nothing like the restaurant. The sectional black leather couch looked like it was from Ikea. 
His idea of a desk was simple black with no drawers. There were no picture frames anywhere. He had no life beyond the restaurant. Of course, he has Samantha, but I guess he has to keep that a secret. It made me think how surprisingly open Samantha was with me. I surprised myself for not freaking out that I would be in close proximity with someone who could potentially be a murderer. Why is it now that I'm thinking about this? Here it is, Samantha looking excited. It was a Persian-style dress, a beautiful blue color. It was layered. The inside was tightly fitted that would hug every curve of my body. The outside layer of material is chiffon, a sheer subtleness, loose and flowy. The neckline is detailed with intricate golden stitch sequence. It was very elegant, but there was no modesty to the cut of the neckline. It looks expensive. Can I wear a blue tank top? And the neckline is really low. When do we dress up, by the way? After the restaurant closes. What? I told you it was going to be a long day. I know what you said, but I didn't think it would be after hours. Is it even legal? Samantha answering with a straight face. If Stephen is present, it is. What is that supposed to mean? The more and more I hear about this, I'm starting to have doubts about it. Is there anything else that you want to add? Something I need to know? With a break in her voice, Samantha responds. Just follow my lead, only talk when talked to, and do what you're told and everything will go smoothly. Now let's get back to work. Danny's probably wondering where we are. I have so many questions, so many things going through my mind about this upcoming event. Whatever that is, what kind of party is it? What is Samantha not telling me? Then, a thought has occurred to me. When I was having an interview with Mr. Boyd, I signed a contract that didn't look familiar. I vaguely remembered part of it saying, extracurricular something. I was so desperate at the time in getting a job that I didn't scan through the details. Mr. Boyd looked surprised that I signed the contract so quickly. He questioned if I looked through every page of the contract. Four pages of it. I lied. I told him I did. Is it too late to ask a copy of the contract? Where the hell were you? Mr. Boyd looking furious. Now is not the day to lollygag. We got customers waiting. I'm sorry. I was in the bathroom and... Mr. Boyd cuts me short. I don't care. Just go out there and do your job. Mr. Boyd was more nervous than usual and was taking his negativity out on the whole staff. Could be acting this way because the Lennoxes were coming? Hey, you. We got to dress up now. The other waitresses got it. So, we are good here. But I'm still cleaning up here. I hate leaving things undone. It's not my nature to depend on others to finish what I'm doing. Samantha forces me to sit down on Mr. Boyd's desk and pulls my chin up so our eyes would meet. Come on, Maya. Snap out of whatever cloud you're in. You need to be focused. Plus, you will have to take off that locket. Getting defensive. What for? Don't freak out, Maya. It doesn't go with the dress. I don't care. This locket never leaves my neck. Got it? All right, all right. Sorry, you can keep it on. I was just suggesting, that's all. I wasn't going to take it off or anything. I know, I'm sorry. It's just this locket means everything to me. Well, I know not to ever bring that up again. I close my eyes and try to relax. Maya, you have such gorgeous hair, and it compliments your face. Gorgeous dark hair, natural curls. I'm so jealous. I swear, if she was telling me the restaurant was burning down, I wouldn't have reacted, because my mind, my body, was not here. All I can think about is that damn contract. If only I had read it. If I just took the time, it was only four pages. Voila! Waking me from my trance, she hands me a mirror. What do you think? Samantha looking all proud of herself. I really must have not paid any attention because I didn't see or feel her putting a beautiful ornate golden jewelry around my head, accented with precious stones. I have always hated wearing makeup, but I got to admit, Samantha did pretty well. It's good. It's good? I think it's a masterpiece. Okay, I like it. I like it a lot. 
That's better. So, how are we going to serve food in this getup? Well, about that. Samantha's eyes fell to the floor. We're not going to serve food. What are we doing then? You said you weren't leaving anything out. We're going to be entertaining them. What do you mean we'll be entertaining them? What the hell does that mean? Why are you freaking out? It was bound to happen. It was just a matter of time. We didn't think you were already at first. We? Who are we? Feeling my face burning up. Danny and I. But Mr. Lennox, I mean Stephen, was persistent. Besides, you signed the contract. You can't back down now. Mr. Boyd walks in. Okay, girls, it's time. I gave a dirty look at Samantha as I was walking past her. We're going to finish this later. While in the lobby, Samantha approaches me and whispers, I know you are mad at me, but right now you got to suck it up and follow my lead. Fine, whatever. Where do you want me? Keep your voice low, stand beside me, and do exactly what I do. We both stood side by side at the front door awaiting the party. First two men entered nicely suited with earpieces on. They looked like secret service agents. One of them talked into their cuff and said it's all clear. First came Gabriel Lennox, hot as ever. He looked exactly the same as I last saw him, except he was dressed up nicely in the black suit. He kept it semi-casual with no tie and buttoning his top portion of his white dress shirt, again showing off his chiseled chest. I gotta give credit to his tailor because he knows which areas of his body to define. Good evening, ladies, addressing Samantha and I at the same time. That resonating voice still gets me, and there's that twitchy feeling again. We both respond at the same time. Good evening, Mr. Lennox. He stands beside me, awaiting his brother. Finally, Stephen walks in, followed by another pair of Secret Service agents. He doesn't have that same confident walk or magnanimous presence. He had no resemblance to his younger brother. He shares the same height. He has salt and pepper wavy hair. Nicely suited, but the suit wore him. He has slight liver spots on his face and a small beer belly. It's obvious he doesn't take very good care of himself. He's handsome, but his personality overshadows his looks. Well, hello there, my beauty, addressing Samantha. His voice doesn't do it for me. You look gorgeous as always. Thank you, Mr. Lennox, Samantha sounding submissive. Please, must I remind you to call me Stephen? Stated in a bossy voice. I'm sorry, Stephen. Samantha's eyes fall to the ground. And you must be Maya. May I? Gesturing to take my hand to kiss. Yes, I am, and yes, you may. His eyes are different from Gabriel's. He has dark, smoky brown eyes, not as much wisdom as I see in Gabriel. I couldn't help but notice his club fingernails. He's definitely a smoker. While still holding my hand, he looks at me from head to toe in a creepy, perverted way, the same way he looked at me the last time I saw him.